pushed the wrong button. <laughs> I always hit the wrong button. You think I would learn? Okay, here we go. Let me get back to. Oh, don't do this to me. I have a fear of PowerPoint. You would think. Okay, let me get it going here. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I love this, uh, I guess you would call it an introduction. You belong here, join a body of believers. And uh, I'm just so thankful that we have such a wonderful family here. Love each and every one of you. Appreciate the... the uh, uh, introduction uh, was it Psalms 51 the reading 67 67 well anyway I was close <laughs> but I appreciated that the Lord's Supper Mark the the uh, singing is just great and anyway uh, I want to talk about uh, a man in the mirror and this reminds me of a little young woman that came running up here, Scott, and gave you a big grin during Bible class. That was cute. Uh, have you ever thought what, how much we use a mirror for? Uh, just think how many, if we were brainstorming, no telling how many mirrors we could come up with. I, I know that a mirror uh, in science, of course, is used for reflecting and refracting, and we could go on and on with a mirror. You can see many things. If you want to see something funny, go on YouTube and type in animals and mirrors. And they are so funny. You know, a cat will run up to a mirror and just woo, and, and just puff up, and, and a dog will usually look behind the mirror if it can. And, and humans, well, that's another story. I had two sisters, but I, I'm not going to embarrass them. Uh, but they, they used a mirror a lot. And as we talk about a mirror, I want this lesson to be one of reflection and relaxation and enjoyment. And since I'm a product of the 50s, I think every sermon I ever heard was kind of a you're going to hell sermon. And I, I don't want to really go into that mode. I, I just don't want to go down that path. But just a quick check. Maybe, maybe this will help us not get back with where we're, we're kind of focusing on. You don't raise your hand here, but how many church of you church families stood in front of a mirror before stepping out today? Now, I, I imagine we all could. I uh, no telling what you know you would find if you're like me. I have a my better spouse uh, even uses one in the car. You know, on the what do you call that thing? Visor. Uh, a visor, I guess. And there's a visor up there, and it's amazing how people can put on makeup and it's a rough road, and if it was me, I'd be up here looking like a clown. But anyway, I think you know that we all use a mirror. And is there anyone totally satisfied with their first image? That is your makeup, your tie, and your hair. And you know, my problem is I, I, I kind of have this scar that I was born with between my ears, and there's not much you can do with it when you look at a mirror. But anyway, it's nice that mirror can be construction and help us in a lot of ways. Is there anyone that saw an abnormality in their image and you just ignore it? Well, you don't have to raise your hand, but you know, there are some hairdos that you kind of wonder. Uh, I think the first time I learned to shave, you know, I didn't have many whiskers, but I think, you know, we'd put, when we'd cut ourselves, we'd tear a little piece of uh, paper towel and stick it. I looked like I had uh, small pox of paper. So anyway, <laughs> Guys, you know, uh, well, we won't even go there, okay. Uh, is there anyone that strongly feels that a mirror is useless? And I used to think it was, but now that we talk about them, we'll find some more things. I wanted to define what a mirror, mirror is, you know, since I taught science for quite a while. And Webster defines a mirror as a polished or smooth surface as of glass that forms images by reflection, 
sometimes that give a true representation. Have you ever been in one of these carnival things where they have these mirrors that make you look, well, in my case, it was pretty good. It made you look real tall. Man, I was going to stand there all day. It was pretty good feeling seven foot tall. I know how Andrew feels all the time. You know, that felt pretty good, bro. <laughs> anyway, uh, but some of them made you look, whoa, you know what I'm talking about. A little fat and, and some of them are just crazy. But mirrors can give you representations of a lot of different things. A mirror is the one of the most important personal care tools, sometimes available in handbags of ladies. I'm not going to ask how many of you ladies have a handbag with a mirror in it. My mother always did. Uh, well, ladies are just a whole lot more beautiful than us guys. I won't go any further than that. A mirror is practically irreplaceable in our lives. And uh, the reality is that we need the mirror more than we can ever imagine when you start thinking about it. There's a spiritual mirror I'm going to talk about in a minute. But you know, there was an old farmer that he had not very much money. He would go into town once a month to get the groceries and everything. And there was this, yes, even in the Depression times, which he was in, they had, uh, what, what are these these stores that are they could good, goodwill stores well I guess that's what it was called then but he found a mirror and it was all framed beautiful mirror and so he bought it he paid quite a bit of money for it for him and he took it home and he thought oh my wife is going to kill me there's just no way I can let her know that I spent the egg money on this mirror so he put the, took the mirror and took it to the barn and hid it in the, the hayloft and you know every morning he would go out there and he would Look at that mirror and, oh man, he needed to comb his hair. He needed to sharpen himself up and he would do that. And after about his week, a week, his wife got real suspicious. I mean, her husband was looking better every morning. You know, he was fixed up and she said, I tell you, I'm worried about my husband. So she saw him fixing to go out to the barn and so she ran out there real quick and hid close to the hay pile. And here he came and she saw him lift up what she'd never really seen a mirror before but she saw him lift up this thing and look at it a while and hide it in the, the hay again and go off she said i gotta go see what he's looking at she picked up that mirror and she saw her reflection and she said just what i thought he's running around with this old hag <laughs> oh, hey you laugh good okay a mirror def whoops i hit the rear thing the spiritual mirror described as the Word of God revealed in the Bible can be described as our spiritual mirror. James 1, 22, 25, kind of the scripture for the day. I'm sorry, uh, Tim, I didn't have that ready to go, but, but be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and he immediately forgets what kind of man he was. And this, I think, really helps us. But he who looks into the mirror, the perfect law of liberty, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this is one that will be blessed in what he does. And we know that's everything. Some facts about a mirror. This reminds me of my younger sister. We practically cannot go through a day without staring at ourselves in the physical mirror. I think when you're in your teenage years, probably more, well, maybe college years, maybe your young adult years, maybe your old age like me. We won't get into that. Prayerfully, we can use our spiritual mirror, though, just the same. Why is a mirror so important? Well, we've talked about some of those things, about what a mirror does. I guess you know that the Russian army have rear view mirrors in their army tanks. Did that go over everybody's head? Mm -hmm. Why would you want a rear view mirror in your army tank? Because you're running away, right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is a mirror important? 
Well, mirrors increase our rooms of pill. Have you ever gone into a house? Uh, where did we have a house that we had a great big mirror that we could go into it? We never have, have we? I can't remember either, huh? Well, anyway, if you've gone into a room and there's a big mirror, it really makes the room get bigger. I know in our, the guy that had the weight room, he had a great big mirror, and it made the weight room, exercise room, look a whole lot bigger. But anyway, in addition of a mirror can help a room look more beautiful and pleasant, if you like larger things, and in some vein, we as Christians are meant to increase the appeal of anywhere we are by our good examples, not just by our physical beauty. Matthew 5.13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. The more we examine ourselves in the spiritual mirror and make the necessary amends, the more we become a better seasoning for the world. Room, mirrors max, maximize a room's lighting. While a mirror can easily double the appeal of a room through its reflection, it can also increase the brightness of the room. So also Christ has confirmed that we are the light of the world. Going to Abilene Christian, one of the things it called Abilene called the college called itself the city on the light the city the city what was it the lighted city on the hill or something like that I can't believe I forgot that well anyway it it you would start up from Treadway and I could remember you could see the whole college it was on a hill and it was definitely a great place to be John 8 12 then Jesus spoke to them again saying I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light, the light of life. Scott, I liked your class. Were you talking about this little light of mine? <laughs> Remember the song we used to sing, and don't let the devil <laughs> it out, right? <laughs> Matthew 5, 14, 16, and 4. Whoops, I clicked that in there. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. In church, you guys get an A-plus from me on that. I just love how all of you shine uh, your bestest, as they say. If we allow the Word of God to dwell in us, then we project the light of Christ and illuminate the world that we live in. Praise God. Mirrors keep you looking sharp. Mirrors reveal our imperfections and help us make amends after a meal. Uh, a person may glance into a mirror to ensure he or she doesn't have anything on their face. Uh, I have a help mate that helps me with that quite a bit if we allow God's word to dwell in us and if we keep looking into it day and night then we will be right with him 2 Timothy 3 through 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that a man of God may complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. James 1.25 But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does. We normally fix the abnormalities. That's hard to say. Abnormalities. Okay. We notice immediately and double check to confirm that the issue has been truly and properly fixed. Messed up hair, smudged lipstick, you name it. Let's also continue to look at the spiritual mirror. May we then identify the inadequacies of our daily lives and fix our spiritual weakness. Thus, looking spiritually sharp, we are sharp in the sight of God. Mirrors provide safety. 
have you ever uh, I don't know when they came out with the mirrors on the right hand side that you look at them and what you see in the mirror is not what you see I guess that was in the what's I'm dating myself that's okay I guess in the 60s the cars had started having that now you look in the mirror and the mirror says what does it say on that mirror objects do not closer than they appear, closer than they appear. Well, let me tell you about a, a, a guy, a lawyer, and this is joke, okay? Talk, <laughs> tell you about a lawyer. He had been very successful, and he decided he was going to buy himself a Shelby Cobra Mustang. Oh, man, it was beautiful. Uh, what color would you like it to be? Black, Black red, whatever. Red. Okay, it was his color. And he got the car, and he thought he'd just take it out for a spin. Beautiful car, pipes, oh, just everything sounded great. He's driving along, he pulls up to a red light, he stops, and the old Mustang is going, blah, 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 blah whatever they do. Just really hot, the whole car was shaking. And this elderly gentleman, about my age, pulls up behind him on a mo beside him on a moped. Uh, how many of you know what a moped is? Oh, I better, I can tell. Those of you that have gray hair or whatever, a moped is an old, usually a swim bicycle that had a little bitty two-stroke motor on it, about this big, and to start it, you had to pedal it. And if you got it started going fast enough, you had a little lever you hit, and it would kick that motor in, and you could top out at 30 miles an hour. I mean, it was good, but it got 100 miles to a gallon, so the moped was really something. But anyway, this older gentleman, pulled up beside him on a moped and he looked at that Mustang and he said, hey son, that is a good looking car. Uh, and the lawyer said, yeah, it's, it's, it's my, my uh, Cobra, uh, Shelby Cobra Mustang. I had it special made, cost a million dollars. The old guy kind of looked at him and said, well, man, that's a lot of money. And the guy said, well, you know, I had to get the 1,000 horsepower motor that this it, it is it is really it's really hot it's really fast and he said it'll go it'll do a quarter mile in about eight seconds do about 150 miles an hour in a quarter of a mile and that thing will top out at 200 miles an hour and boy the elderly gentleman was impressed he said son can I just you know it was a convertible he said can I just look over in here and see what you got and the lawyer said well sure that's no problem so the old man looked in there, checked out everything, the TV screen. He said, can you get uh, uh, TV stations on that? And the guy said, no, this is just tells me what, what the safety and everything else. And the old guy said, well, that's really nice. But he said, you know, I'm gonna stick with my moped. Well, that kind of upset the lawyer. So he, the light changed and he just floorboarded that Mustang and it took off. And the guy looked down, and in nine seconds, he was doing 150 miles an hour. And he looked in that left rearview mirror, and there was that old guy on the bicycle. He couldn't believe it. And the old guy was catching him, coming up slower and faster. Boy, he floorboard that nine-speed transmission, and that Mustang got up to 200 miles an hour. He looked in his mirror, and the old man was on the bike, on the moped, I'm sorry, going like crazy. And all of a sudden, boom, the moped hit the back of the, the Mustang and they are trying to pass him. And a guy, a lawyer, shut the Mustang down real quick and the old guy was out on the side of the road with his bike and just, just the lawyer said, oh, I've killed this old guy and I'm gonna have a lawsuit. He goes over to the old guy and the guy was still alive. And the, old guy, and the lawyer got down and was listening and he said, I have never, seen a moped go that fast. Are you hurt? The lawyer said, what'd you say? And the old man said, would you please, please take my suspender off of your side view mirror? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible joke, but it was okay. That's why he kept catching up. That spender was stretching and Okay. Anyway, mirrors are great, but not for mopeds. Can you imagine driving a car without any mirror? The mirror makes us aware of our environment when we're driving, hence keeping safe on the road. I drove an 18-wheeler for a while for Sue's dad, and we hauled combines. 
And boy, you have to have those mirrors. If you don't, well, we won't even go there. So also is God's Word, if we keep it in our, here, our hearts. Psalms 119.11 said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you. In fact, there's a song like that. John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man uh, pluck them out of his hand, my hand. The parable of the wedding garment. A typical example of someone that's failed to use a mirror can be seen in Christ's parable of the wedding garment. You know the story. The parable of the wedding garment is another way that God spoke to the, the disciples by extension of Christians that we are today, that is you and me. I think you know that the uh, wedding, they were supposed to choose, they were supposed to be dressed. And of course, some of the people showed up for the wedding in the parable and they weren't dressed. So boy, the guy who had the party tied them up and threw them out. Of course, that was really a situation where like us going to heaven. Though the king had invited a lot of dignitaries that failed to honor his invitation, he still had a dress code for everyone that would attend the wedding ceremony. One would have thought the man in the parable would have done well to honor the king's invitation by attending the wedding, but he felt in the sense that he didn't look at himself in the mirror to confirm that he had on the right garment. That could be any one of us if we fail continually to examine ourselves. Matthew 11, uh, 22 through 11 through 14 says, but when the king came in to see the guest, he saw a man who did not have on a correct garment and ordered that man to be thrown out of the party. 